My name is Andrea Hunter. I represent the United Steel Workers, local 1299. I'm an electrician at the steel mill. You know who? Go <laughs> in the steel trade. But my point here today is explain to you the community. I want to explain how important the community is to all of our lives, our livelihood, and our families. One thing I have a problem with, and this is what I want people to understand, masses makes votes. That's right. When you call yourself the middle class, I have a problem with that because now you alienate that lady that work at Target. She doesn't make what you make. Right. You alienate that husband who works at the car wash. You alienate those families that have two jobs every day they go to. So start calling yourself working America, labor America, okay? Because we're all working America. And our country only make up 11.7%. We have been defined as the 99%, okay? So that means we're leaving out 88.3. We're not getting to them. When we have rallies, mass rallies, you see the same people. You know why? because you're not going to the community. Example of going to the community is, years ago, unions used to feed the hungry in the community, give coats to the people who have no coats, give food to the people who have no food. Now unions, we have $100 dinners where we can take that money and get it to the community. Why is the community important? Because they're the masses. That's right. If they do not know what's going on, they do not back you because they feel alienated. A perfect example is Martin Luther King. In 1963, he got two, him and Phil Randolph, and Bayard Rustin was able to organize 250,000 labor workers, people of all walks of life, on Washington, D.C., to make a positive change. You know why? The community. They didn't have Facebook. A lot of people didn't have televisions in their homes. A lot of people, you would be surprised, didn't have phones. But they got 250,000. Yeah. Everybody bragged about 2011, we got 300,000 people watching. That was pathetic. 50 years later with all the media we had, yeah. all the information we had. Everybody. You know why? Because we alienate immunity. What you got to understand is that it used to be a time in America when labor said jump, America said hi hi, yeah. because we gave back to them. Right. We got to, as women, understand we are national organize. That's right. We organize our bills, we organize our children, we organize our work days. That's right. It's time to go back into that community and embrace that sister. That one lady who may have a problem with drugs, whatever, all she needs is somebody to say, hey, I understand. And instead of looking down on our sisters, we need to hold them up. Yeah. Now, until, <laughs> until that is done, we will not have masses. We will not have groups. And also, it used to be a time in America, our families might have came from the South, they might have had a third grade education, a sixth grade education. This is what I call wise and weaker. Four-year-olds can get on the internet, okay? But our other people back in our day, our ancestors, did not have this capital of education, but they went to that congressman and say, hey, if you don't vote our way, we vote you out. All right? It's a time in America, you live in a neighborhood, don't even know your neighbor's name. You don't even know the guy across the street. That is why we have massive children missing. It used to be a time, hey, you better not take that kid. That's Michael's son. That's Dana's daughter. Now, because we don't know each other and don't give back to each other, we're lacking, and that's what's stopping us from having masses to the poll. Masses. The community is the way we have to go. Thank you. It is disturbing that the legislature seems obsessed with silencing women in every way possible, including in the workplace. The most broad and vicious attacks on collective bargaining have come against teachers. Who makes up the vast majority of teachers? Women. The legislature has attacked public sector workers. Who makes up the majority of government workers? Women. Who makes up the majority of single income households? Women. Women workers deserve economic security and collective bargaining is the only tool that gives us enough power to get close to that. Here are the facts. Women workers in jobs with collective bargaining make more money. That difference is more extreme for African American and Latina women. We're talking about hundreds of dollars a week that could pay for groceries, daycare, or medical bills. 
women workers in jobs with collective bargaining are more likely to receive retirement benefits. They are almost 19% more likely to have employer-provided health insurance. In contrast, having a four-year college degree increases a woman's chance of her employer providing health insurance by only 8.4%. In a country where education is supposed to be the great equalizer, it is collective bargaining that actually levels the playing field. It's that important. The Michigan Nurses Association is a leader in the campaign to permanently protect collective bargaining rights by adding them to the state constitution. Assuming there are no shenanigans by the powers that be, you will have the chance to vote on that in November. We as a society cannot allow those politicians and special interests in this building to take away our voice as women and as workers. That's right. But today is not about them. Today is about you and us and all the wonderful women in Michigan. It's about using our voices to stand up for ourselves and our families and protecting the right to use our voices. So go today and say what's on your mind to your legislative officials in that building. Just remember that the power of the people, your power, does not end here. You will have a chance at the ballot box to protect every worker's collective bargaining rights. We will all have a chance, one chance, to keep our state from going backwards when it comes to economic justice for women. So raise your voices today, raise your voices tomorrow, and raise your voices in November. Yes. Thank you. Breastfeeding mothers is not, the, the issues going on with breastfeeding mothers, let me say that, is not just, do you have children, are you breastfeeding now? Uh, it's not just a women's issue. We've talked about every, every part of the woman today, okay, from, from the vaginas to the breast. But this is important because we need to stand together in order to make changes. There are things out there that are going on that people didn't even know were an issue. And we need to, to start paying attention to what's going on around us. And one of the things that I'm hoping to accomplish is to have mothers come out and breastfeed in public. Yes. If you see a mother breastfeeding, give her a high five, wave at her, smile at her, wink at her, do something to let her know that you support her. Because what's going to happen is you're going to give her the courage to keep coming out. You want to give another mother the courage to come out. And we need this. We need this. We need for our children to see mothers breastfeeding so they'll breastfeed. We need for our male children to see mothers breastfeeding so they'll stand behind breastfeeding so when they have kids, they'll support their, their wives for uh, breastfeeding. This is very important. It's not just a breastfeeding, I'm not breastfeeding today issue. That's not, that's not what this is about. This is an issue for the community. And we really need to everybody to come out and show your support. We have um, a petition on change.org slash petitions slash protect mother's rights. Please go on there and sign that petition. We need to get some, some law put in place, not just to, to protect a mother's right for breastfeeding, but to say, you're not going to, to disrespect a mother in my presence. That's it's not right. going to happen. That's and we, we really need to get this going. So we have That's to stand right. together. All the freedoms that we have right here in this country, freedom of speech, constitutional rights, civil rights, human rights. Additionally, we don't have to continue to repeat the steps that the Sheroes and the Trailblazers have already accomplished. Number one, 1920s, we got the right to vote. What are we going to do in August? Vote. What are we going to do in November? Vote. We have the right to do whatever we want to do. The Sheroes have paved the way to us. Let's not let them down. We are sick of discrimination as it relates to our bodies. We're, dis we're sick of pregnancy discrimination. We're dis sick of promotional opportunities that we've been deprived of. 